I read a post recently that asked the question, in the 2382 exam, requirements for electrical installations, will we get any questions about RCBOs and what sorts of questions can we expect? And then, how do I find the answers? So, in this video, I've put together 12 questions related to RCBOs and RCDs that often come up in the BS 7671 18th edition exam, along with the answers. Also, I often get asked which books can be used in the exam. All the questions in the exam will be based on the Brown Book, the 18th edition Amendment 2 book. The older blue book should not be used. Some new regulations will have been added to the Brown Book that do not appear in the Blue Book, and some regulations will have been deleted. So the Brown Book is the only one to use. Also, you cannot take any other books into the exam. No on-site guide, and no electrician's guide. And anyway, you won't need them. There are 12 questions in this video, all related to RCBOs and RCDs. To maximise your understanding, pause the video on each question slide and attempt an answer. Even if you get it wrong, you will have gained some useful knowledge. For each question, the next slide shows the answer and where to find it in the regulations book. Look up the location of the answer. It all builds understanding of the layout of the regulations book. And to help you to get a grasp of finding answers, I've included tips on how I would find the answer quickly and easily. All it takes is a little regular practice. This is my sketch of a typical RCBO, single width and about twice the height of a standard MCB. But be aware that miniature RCBOs are also available that are the same height as an MCB. And RCDs and RCCBs can be double width. Shown here is a Type A RCBO, with fewer and fewer Type AC devices being installed nowadays. Take note of the two yellow boxes on the left. This is a Type A RCBO for residual currents with a Type B curve for overcurrents. A Type A device will respond to AC sine waves and pulsed DC as found in many modern appliances, TVs, washing machines, microwaves, etc. This device has a residual tripping current of 30 milliamps. The B curve part is for overcurrents and shown here is a B20 device. It will follow the time and current curves for a 20 amp B curve as shown in Appendix 3. Pause the video and take a moment to understand the sketch. To the questions then. Question 1. The abbreviation RCBO is defined as being short notation for what? Four possible answers, only one is correct. Pause the video and find the exact wording in the wiring regulations book. The correct answer is C, found in definitions on page 42. Residual current operated circuit breaker with integral overcurrent protection. The clue is the word defined. This is used in the question. The word defined should point you towards definitions part 2. Shown highlighted below is the extract from the book. Question 2 asks, the maximum disconnection time for a 6 amp RCBO that is protecting a final circuit with a nominal voltage of 230 volts AC that is part of a TN installation is, and again, four possible answers. Pause the video and find the answer. The answer choice is B, 0 0.4 seconds, as found in table 41.1 on page 65. Look in the index at the back of the book, page 583. Find disconnection times, find final circuits, and you are directed to table 41.1. The rest is a simple case of cross-referencing the table. Question 3 next. A Type A RCBO installed 
in an AC installation is intended to be operated by ordinary persons. The device should comply with which of the listed standards? This is answer D. BSEN 61009 Found on page 157 Regulation 531.3.4.1 Read the text carefully. BSEN 61008 is for RCCBs, not RCBOs. BSEN 62423 is for type F and type B, whereas the question specifies type A. By elimination, it must be BSEN 61009, answer D. To find the regulation, look in the index on page 601. Look down the left-hand column, which is mostly residual current devices, and near the bottom is an entry. Precautions to be taken where ordinary persons may operate device. This will direct you to 531.3.4.201, found on page 157, and immediately above .201 is the regulation that you need. Question 4 asks us that regardless of the RCD type, effectiveness is deemed to have been verified where a general non-delay type RCD disconnects within what time when tested with an alternating current at the rated residual operating current I delta N. In other words, the RCD tripping current shown on the device. The answer is A, 300 milliseconds maximum. Regulation 643.8 on page 237. The clue is the word tested that should take you to part 6 of the book, Testing. After that, finding 643.8 is easy. This is the only RCD tripping test that we are required to do now, regardless of type AC, type A, type B or type F. No need for 5 times test if you don't need to do it. Many, though, still do. Next, question 5, about disconnection times. The maximum disconnection time for a 16 amp RCBO that is protecting a distribution circuit with a nominal voltage of 230 volts AC that is part of a TN system is what? The answer is C, 5 seconds. The answer is given in regulation 411.3.2.3 on page 65. Look in the index on page 583 for disconnection times, distribution circuits. It will direct you straight to regulation 411.3.2.3. Question 6 asks, What is the maximum earth fault loop impedance, ZS, according to the tables in the BS7671 wiring regulations book for a 25 amp BSEN61009 RCBO with type C overcurrent characteristics for a final circuit with a U0 of 230 volts AC and a maximum disconnection time of 0 0.4 seconds. Pause the video and find the answer. The answer is D, 0 0.87 ohms, found in table 41.3 on page 68. Again, Look in the index on page 583 for disconnection times, final circuits, and you will be directed to table 41.1. Since the question mentions tables, it is then just a matter of turning a page or two to find table 41.3 for circuit breakers and RCBOs. For question 7, in order to achieve a disconnection time between 0 0.1 seconds and 5 seconds, the time current characteristics for a 40 amp type C curve RCBO to BSEN61009 shows that a fault current of how many amps must flow. This is answer C, 400 amps, and is found in figure 3A5 on page 418. 
Now we need to find the tables for time and current characteristics as these are mentioned in the question. Using the index, page 606, find time current characteristics in the right hand column. Then go to appendix 3 as suggested. Once you are in appendix 3, follow the headings at the top left of each page and search for figure 3A5, which is on page 418. You now have the table for type C as shown on this slide. On to question 8. What is the maximum earth fault loop impedance, ZS, according to the tables in the BS 7671 wiring regulations book for a 10 amp BSEN 61009 RCBO with a type B overcurrent characteristic for a distribution circuit with a U0 of 230 volts AC and a maximum disconnection time of 5 seconds? The answer choice is B, 4.37 ohms. This is found in table 41.3 on page 68. You need to know that for BSEN 60898 circuit breakers and BSEN 61009 RCBOs, the ZS values for final circuits and distribution circuits are the same. They both use table 41.3. So, Look in the index on page 583 for disconnection times, final circuits, and you will be directed to table 41.1. And since the question mentions tables, just turn a page or two to find table 41.3 for circuit breakers and RCBOs. Number 9 asks, A single phase circuit that is protected by a 20 amp RCBO is to be wired in 2.5 square millimeter single core thermoplastic copper cables for the line and neutral conductors. Select a suitable size conductor for the circuit protective conductor, the earth, from the relevant table. The answer is choice A, 2.5 square millimeter single conductor. This is found by using table 54.7 on page 201. If the line conductor is not more than 16 square millimetres, then the CPC or earth is the same size as the line conductor. Here, the line conductor is 2.5 square millimetre, so the CPC is also 2.5 square millimetres. How to find table 54.7 from the index is fairly straightforward. The question uses the word select. Turn to page 600 of the index. This is protective conductors and just a few lines down on the left hand side are the words selection and direction section 543 from where table 54.7 is found on page 201. Note that we have not been asked to calculate a cross-sectional area but to select a suitable size and no calculators are needed. Now for question 10. The requirements of regulation 411.5.3 are met if the earth volt loop impedance of a 230 volt AC circuit protected by a BS EN 61009 RCBO with a rated residual operating current of 100 milliamps if the maximum earth volt loop impedance ZS does not exceed what? The answer choice is B, 500 ohms. This is found in table 41.5 on page 70. And this one could not be easier. Turn to the regulation quoted in the question, regulation 411.5.3, and there, just a half dozen lines below, is the wording of the question and the table to use. For question 11, we have an electric vehicle charging point that does not use electrical separation. The 230 volt AC circuit incorporates a socket outlet and must therefore be protected by an RCD device. Which of the following types of RCD, RCBO are not suitable? Pause the video and find an answer. Finding regulation 722 
dot five three one dot three dot one zero one on page three two seven we can see that type AC devices are not listed. The answer choice by elimination is therefore B. Using the index, page 601, look for residual current devices RCDs. Several lines down, we find an entry for electric vehicle charging points, regulation 722.531.3.101. That takes us directly to the answer that we need. And finally, to question 12. The calculation for ZSM, the maximum measured impedance of the earth fault current loop, must be adjusted to take into account the increase in resistance of the conductors with the increase in temperature due to load current. The correct formula to use is, and a choice of four similar formulas. But which one? Pause the video and find an answer. The answer is formula D. This is found on page 410 of appendix 3. This is the so-called 80% rule. How did we find that in the book? Find page 584 in the index. Halfway down on the right hand side is earth fault loop impedance as mentioned in the question. And a little further down is the word maximum that also appears in the question. Turning to Appendix 3, beginning on page 409, we have a formula, but 0 0.8 does not appear in it. Over the page to page 410, and we have a formula that does contain a 0 0.8. Match the formula in the book to the formula in the question, and we have the answer choice, D. The 18th edition exam is not about what you can remember. Who, realistically, can remember everything from more than 600 pages of regulations? The exam is about knowing the big brown book. Do you understand what the question is asking? And can you navigate your way around the regulations book to find the answer? And can you use the index? Every time that you open your book or watch a video on the 18th edition exam, you are adding to your learning and understanding. The best way to improve your knowledge is consistent and regular study. An hour every other day over a month is better and easier than three hours of cramming the night before your exam. And good luck. Thank you for watching. I hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. A little learning on a regular basis will yield maximum results for you. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And don't forget you can also type in Learn Electrics into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer or smart device. We are always adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.